Welcome to Executive Warrior Academy, where we show you how you can work less and achieve more, and be a kick-ass, limitless, effective person. Today, it's all about energy. Most people, when they run out of energy in the afternoon, they reach for the usual suspect of caffeine and sugar. The problem with caffeine, it can make some people feel very wired but tired. So it's not not productive.、Um, Productivity in the sense that you can leverage the energy, so you actually take it. You, you your mind can't actually concentrate, but you feel amped up that you, you want to go. It's great for maybe digging trenches, but it's not very good for intellectual work, and that's the negative side of caffeine. But for others, caffeine gives them this ultra high and then ultra low. Okay, they just. After caffeine, they feel like they need another one within an hour, and you know you don't have time to go and just keep on buying coffee. The other aspect of most stimulants is full of sugar. So, you know, Red Bull, Monster are full of sugar. If you get the sugar-free version, you're replacing with artificial sweetener, right? So, sugar. Let's talk about sugar for a little bit. The sugar is going to spike your insulin. It's going to create Metabolic disease. It's gonna put you in a higher risk of getting diabetes. It's gonna put belly fat on your tummy because insulin is a fat generating signal. When you have sugar, it, you're basically programming your body to crave fat. No good. Now artificial sweeteners. What about that? What about them? The thing is, it there's a lot of studies to show that. Artificial sweeteners negatively disrupt your microbiome, which is the、uh, the gut bacteria that's living in you, that's helping you creating a lot of the vitamins, the neurotransmitters that your body need, is getting disrupted by artificial sweeteners. And why would you want to do that? It's not a good thing. So we do know that stimulant、uh, stimulant drinks like Monster, Red Bull. And caffeine is not for everybody. It does have a biological impact on your health, but what options are they? I'm going to show you one of the most powerful option that many of you have never heard of. There you go, autofocus. Thank you. All right, what I'm showing you is nicotine. Now, Steve. Okay, just let's say it's stimulating. It's good for focus. It's good for the brain. So you can get work done. Okay, even if I believe you, but doesn't this cause cancer? Well, if you one thing for you to、uh, notice that if you go and buy these things as a spray, as a as a gum, as a patch, notice on the packet is that it doesn't say、uh, it causes cancer, connected to the risk of cancer. Whereas if you buy a pack of cigarette, by law, it says. It, smoking causes cancer, so what gives? Why? What? What? What's the difference? Well, the difference is is how it's delivered. Smoking causes cancer. You smoke anything with this marijuana, cigar. Those things have more than just nicotine, right? There's a ton of other substances that's carcinogenic. It's not just the nicotine that you're getting. You you're basically putting a chemical cocktail into your body. So that is a there's a difference. That's why these things they, they, they on the packet you can buy it and it's not going to say, oh use a nicotine and you're going to get cancer. No, it's different. The mechanism is different. This is pure nicotine. Smoking is a chemical cocktail. Same as nothing. You know where they put the the ground up tobacco in the mouth. That's a different de- delivery mechanism than just pure nicotine. So that's the first difference. The, 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 it's not the same risk when you between you know, smoking and and a spray like this, right? Okay, what about the addiction? People get addicted to these things. Well, Andrew Huberman recently did a podcast about addiction. He dives in depth and into what is this the addiction and how do people get addicted? It's all about the rate of dopamine release. Or the do- the trend for which dopamine goes up and comes down, dopamine is a neurotransmitter that creates motivation, creates drive. It gives you a 
a desire to go and get something, to, to reach for it, right? Whether it's your business goal, you want to 10x your business, or whether it's just about finishing some work. It's also associated with um, motivation, okay? So dopamine, think dopamine, it means motivation to achieve something. Now, that's great for driving um, a goal, but when it raises up really, really quickly, very fast, what happens is you get a really deep drop where you just become completely unmotivated. You just really, almost like really depressed. You just don't want to do a thing. You don't want to talk to anybody. You're so depressed that you want that next hit, right? It, it basically, you got this, you can't stop thinking about that substance and then you just want that even more. And because of that vicious cycle of peak and trough, you become dependent. You don't think about anything else. There's nothing else drive you the same pleasure as you will get from that hit. And that's what happens when you have cocaine. It is also what happens when you smoke nicotine, right? Nicotine, when smoke, it goes into your lung, into your alveoli. It goes into your blood really, really quickly. You get this big, giant boost in nicotine and, and, sorry, do, and, do, and also dopamine. And that's a different thing to you know putting a spray with just one milligram or through a patch. The rate of absorption is different, right? It's uh, let me let me put it in a way that's um, I think you and I can understand. There's a difference to eating a hamburger than I put it in a blender and inject it into my vein. I hope you can see the difference. It is a different. The mechanism for which it gets in your body does make a difference in the impact. That it will have. If you, if I in, if I pureed hamburger and inject it into my vein, I'll probably die, right? It's not meant to. It's meant to be digested, broken down in my stomach into intestine, and then slowly makes makes its way through the tight junctions in my intestine. And then the right stuff gets in the blood. That is different. So smoking and also vaping. Okay, anything that's aero. Um, like act as an aerosol that's, that's kind of being uh, aerosol into and you breathe it in vaping is also a very addictive way to consume nicotine it goes into your blood so quickly it's very much like similar to um, actually crack cocaine right so you know they put a spoon they burn it and they they inhale in, in the, the, the little rocks. They're basically using heat to vaporize it so that you can break it in, and that's vaping, right? So I'm not talking about snuffing, vaping, or uh, smoking. That's what I'm talking about. So that is what's the difference of the addictive potential because it's not going into that big peak and trough. Therefore, this is not the same as... Smoking in terms of addiction for me. So, I this is something I do use myself. And initially, I have to overcome my own mental objections against nicotine because there's a lot of um, research to show that nicotine is actually neuroprotective. And it's an amazing molecule because in your cells, in your body, you do have nicotinic receptors which actually bind this perfectly, right? So, your body. It's arguable whether it's actually designed to have nicotine at all, but it's just simply called nicotinic receptors because it, it binds with nicotine very well. Now, what does it do for our mental focus? And what it does is a number of things. It does several mechanisms which will help you focus better. First, it raises acetylcholine in your nervous system, in your brain. Acetylcholine the way you think about it, it's almost like a highlighter, right? So, um, okay, so if you want, if I got a really bright flashlight, let's say I'm trying to read uh, a book, right? Let's see if I, put, I don't have a book here, but let's say if I'm trying to read a book and it's dark, I, shine, I turn on my light and I shine it on it, and then now I can read. Let's say I, I finish this book and I've got another book, and but it's dark. And I shine a light on it. I, now I can read. Acetylcholine is like this light that I can point anywhere except it's pointed by your brain. So whatever things I want to focus on, 
it helps me focus better. All right, it help activate that whether it's your creative center or whether you it's just more about the um, kind of reduction of thinking when you're trying to narrow down right convergent thinking. They 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 use different parts of the brain, but whichever part of it it activates more effectively. It's amazing uh, um, substance for for. From a productivity and effectiveness boosting perspective, because it makes everything you, whatever you apply it, it just makes it better, right? So acetylcholine is a is a mechanism that it does increase and it also keeps it around in the blood longer than naturally. The other thing it also increases is epinephrine and no epinephrine, and these are energizing factors that actually keep you energized and make you want to be able to do things. It's like the the fuel of the rock engine that kind of powers you through, right? The 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 testosterone, the epinephrine, no epinephrine, which is adrenaline and no adrenaline in other speak. But this is what powers you, right? So imagine if you have this powerful energy driving you and then you've got this laser guy that focus to be able to do everything better. Very few substances elevate everything. Nicotine being one of them. It's one of the few things that does activate all of them. The benefit of nicotine is also it's not long lasting. So caffeine, for those of you who are agitated by caffeine, these things last about two hours, three hours tops, right? Depending on how fast your genetics, how fast you got rid of it. But caffeine has a half life of like six hours to eight hours to 12 hours. So if you're drinking coffee in the afternoon, even if you can't sleep, or, or you have Red Bull, or you know, basically all cafe, like, caffeine you drink. By the way, just quick fact, guarana is caffeine. So don't let this big food marketing thing telling you guarana is natural and therefore it's, it's, it's fine. It's not like caffeine. It is caffeine, okay? Just, I want to help you spot that lie. Okay, so you have that. It will, and you're trying to sleep, even if you can fall asleep, it will reduce the quality of your sleep. You're, not, you're gonna feel, wake up feeling more tired, it will, you'll, you'll, you'll be more disturbed, you're gonna have worse dreams. It is not a good thing, right? But it, because it takes so long to clear that out, for people, especially if you're sensitive, you can't even take caffeine, right? This, this option is great because it only lasts a few hours. And this is how I use it. If I most now, I fixed my diet. I've upgraded my body. I've upgraded my nutrition to the point where I really don't get tired in the afternoon anymore. Three o'clock, two o'clock used to be my dreaded afternoon black hole of energy death. No longer, so I fixed that. I don't need that. But what I do need is, after the kids go to bed, I want some energy to be able to do some work, productive work. And that is a couple of hours, three hours after they go to bed. But I do not want it to interfere with my sleep. So I have one of these, right? So I just, one spray, one milligram. Most cigarettes are like, what, 10 milligrams, 12 milligrams. You can buy different um, strength. But this is just one milligram and gives me just enough motivation, drive, and focus to, to last for a couple of hours finish up, I start feeling tired, I go to bed, I sleep like a baby. I get sleeping scores. That's just, you know, I track my sleep every single day for the last about nine years. So I know my sleep score and what factors impact it. And these things don't impact it, provided that I, you know, the last spray is around two hours before I go to bed. They're fine. They last me till when I need to go to bed and doesn't impact my sleep at all based on the metrics that I'm measuring. So there you go. That is a one, a single nootropic that's actually gonna boost your focus, your brain power, and give you the energy for a couple of hours to get your work done without the stimulant, the, neg the downside stimulant, without you know the negative impact for sugar or caffeine where, where you do feel white, but you, it doesn't raise your acetylcholine and therefore you can't direct that energy. So you've got this very powerful, you know, hose of energy. You can't really control a point, right? So it's, it's, it, it doesn't have any of the side effect. It's an amazing molecule. Now, I'm not telling you to take, take it. I'm introducing it to, to bring it to your awareness. Go and do your research. 
Don't take what I say as gospel. Just go and do your research, check it out, try it out. I know it's controversial, but I do know it's powerful, right? Go and do your own research. Look at Andrew Huberman's uh, talk about nicotine, uh, its addiction properties, its uses, and how do you quit for people who are vaping, um, you know, snuffing and smoking. There are different ways of quitting. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. I'll put the link to Andrew Huberman's video below. If you have any questions, let me know. If you haven't subscribed, why the bloody hell no? <laughs> this is the best channel for helping you work less and achieve more. And I'll do everything I can to help you get there. All right, I'll see you next time. Take care.